to set up the church before church. You know, we got to break it down after church. So uh, took the road of least resistance and just went with a little podium here this morning or this evening. So <laughs> hopefully it uh, doesn't affect the teaching or the preaching. <laughs> It does. We'll throw this thing out. <laughs> All right, Galatians chapter five says, uh, verse one: Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. All right. So, having finished up Galatians chapter four, uh, Paul enters into this more spiritual um, context for the believer in Christ, and he's going to deal with Galatians 5 and Galatians 6 as far as now that you're free in Christ, uh, here's how you're supposed to live. And so 5 and 6 are more like instructions for the New Testament Christian um, as, uh, as a believer who's been set free. All right. So in light of what we just learned in chapter 4, we should stand fast in the doctrine and truth of our liberty and freedom in Christ and not become entangled again with the yoke of bondage under the law or the flesh. And so that's what Paul is doing. He's saying now that we're not under the law and now that we're supposed to uh, not live in the flesh because we've been set free by the Spirit, uh, let us stand fast in that truth and let us go forward with that, uh, with that promise or that knowledge that we are not under the law, and what we do is not because we're in bondage to the law, but because we are free in Christ uh, to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a real blessing to be able to serve God, amen. amen. Um, we don't consider service or a servant, uh, being a servant as a blessing, uh, but really it's a blessing that you can serve God. And um, anything you do for God, if it's, if it's done with the right heart, uh, is a blessing to God. And that's how God chooses to get things done for the last 2,000 years is to use a bunch of, you know, carnal, mortal man uh, to accomplish uh, his will and his plan uh, in the world. And God could have done anything. I mean, God did use a jackass. God could have just used a bunch of donkeys uh, to spread the message. But he chose to use humans. He chose to use you and I. And uh, we should count it a blessing that he chose to do that. And we should use whatever time we have left uh, for the glory of God. And so he says there, stand fast, therefore. So therefore, in light of chapter 4, uh, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, notice, wherewith Christ hath made us free. So the only person that can make a person free is Christ. Amen. Abraham Lincoln didn't make anybody free. Amen. The Emancipation Proclamation, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, uh, any sort of um, government document or legal document, no judge, no court, no parole board, uh, no jury has ever made anybody free. Amen. Amen. Only the Lord Jesus Christ That's makes right. an individual free. Amen. All those other things could have been, uh, could be accomplished by lost men for lost men. Yeah. And they are not free until they meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so if tonight, if you're saved, you have the greatest freedom you could ever ask for. Amen. Uh, you know, freedom, freedom, everybody can promise it, but only one can deliver on it. Amen. 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 The Lord Jesus Christ, the only one that can deliver on Amen. the promise of freedom. Uh, what was that old, that movie that Mel Gibson was in where he yelled, was it freedom? Braveheart. You know, was that Braveheart? Patri was that Braveheart? Braveheart. Yes, I, was, I always get those two confused, Patriot and Braveheart. You know, <laughs> same guy in both, right? Yeah. Same guy in both. But uh, he yells out freedom, you know. Uh, what is what is the Roman Catholic Mel Gibson ever know about freedom? Uh, you know what I mean. What 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 Roman Catholic knows about freedom? They don't know anything about it. Uh, all it is is a, it's a line in a movie somewhere to get people hopped up on uh, on bravery. You know, yeah. and uh, they call it Braveheart. And uh, well, anyways, sometimes you need those those Hollywood films that kind of pump you up a little bit. But man, if you're saved, if you're in Christ, you've got. Much more than a than a Hollywood line, you know, yelled out by 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 Mel Gibson with with war paint on, put on by some transvestite in the uh, in the makeup trailer. <laughs> Funny, but uh, freedom. We're free in Christ. 
All right, and that, as that is the truth, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And, uh, and so every time you try to find freedom in anything other than Christ, you're nothing but uh, a, a person back under the old yoke. Yes. And so you really need to you know, see yourself being free and not get wrapped up in all the political promises of freedom. Um, because really, that is a yoke of bondage. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm aware of the politics. You know, I saw some things this week that you know make your skin curdle yeah. and mm -hmm. make your make your set your teeth on edge. The Bible says, or mm -hmm. uh, Bible says about God that his his uh, his teeth are white as milk, but his eyes are red with wine. Mm -hmm. I mean, God is angry with the wicked every day, mm -hmm. and God sees all the stuff going on in the world, and you're going to see it too. And sometimes you choose to see, the times you just happen to see it. But it ought to make you mad. Uh, but don't get entangled with it. Don't get don't get uh, put under the yoke of, of what's going on out there because it's going to change tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody said it recently yeah, that the politics, yeah, the media, the news is really just a marketing agency. Yeah. They're just marketing something to you. Uh, they're they're marketing to you uh, whatever they got that they're trying to push, whatever agenda. It's just a marketing scheme that gets you to to buy in. Yeah. And uh, you don't you don't need all of it. But that being said, uh, the devil will will yoke you up under fear, right? And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We know that Second Timothy one seven. <coughs> he says, you know, not not to be put anymore under the bondage of fear. Yeah. Um, and so fear can become a bondage, can become a burden to you. Uh, any number of fears can be that. Um, doesn't always have to be the fear of losing your salvation or the fear of you know. That I sin enough to for God now to put me in hell. It doesn't have. It can be any kind of fear of anything. You know, the fear of dying, the fear of getting old, the fear of losing your job, the fear of getting sick, um, the fear of your kids growing old and moving out of the house. Uh, any number of things can become a fear. And and listen, there's a spirit in man. Yeah. I mean, fears are natural to the human nature, and uh, God didn't remove all of those natural things from us. He kept us in the same flesh, and we got saved. So those natural things of man still are aroused by the things that are in the world. Yes. And so the idea about that is when you come under the pressure of fear, it's how you live or how you move forward in light of it. Uh, to succumb to it would be to be put in bondage. Yep. Mm -hmm. To recognize that this thing is a fearful thing and it's a, it's a frightening idea, it's a frightful thought, but turning over the Lord and saying, yeah. Lord, I don't know how to deal with this thought. I don't know how to deal with this sort of a situation yeah. or with this yeah. looming idea or, or process of getting older, you know, whatever it is, a tax day is coming, Lord. I don't know how to, I don't know how to file my taxes this year. Yep. It's giving it over to the Lord and saying, Lord, you know my, my inclination is to be afraid not how to handle this. Could you give me some direction, some clarity, some idea, some, some light to my path here? Um, but to just say, well, I'm a Christian, so I can't, I can't worry about anything. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not, that's not the way things are. You are, you are human, and God made you uh, in, in um, body, soul, and spirit. And that body is not saved. The soul and the spirit are, but the body is not. And so you are going to have some uh, proclivities to fear, to, to uncertainty. The things I preached to you about on Sunday about um, what things we have to go through until we get to our final destination. Remember? Uh, uncertainty, um, uh, regret, um, uh, uh, being betrayed. All those things are, are the things that everybody goes through. And they think, well, I'm a Christian, so nothing can bother me. Yeah. You're crazy. Yeah. Things bother Christians all the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you get some of these Christians, these Pentecostals, well... The faith of the sick shall heal the sick, so I'm not going to take any medication. I'm not going to go see a doctor ever. I'm just going to pray that God heals me because i got the faith to pray. Yeah. Well, you're going to die in whatever state sickness you're in. Yeah. Unless God does some new miracle, he certainly can. Yeah. But it ain't because you've got some great faith to overcome cancer. <laughs> That's not all the things that get done. Now, I don't care if you got to take holistic treatment. I guarantee you're not going to just want to sit there and do nothing. Yeah. While the world passes you by. <laughs> and your kids are saying, Ma, Dad, you need to get treated. Ma, Dad, you need to go see the doctor. You, you don't look good. Your skin's getting kind of gray. <laughs> What's going on here? You see what I'm saying? So just because you're a Christian don't mean things don't touch you like it touches the unsaved. 
The same things that the unsaved deal with, Christians got to deal with. The only difference is we've got a God that can deal with it yes. for us yes. and help us help us to deal with it. Amen. Amen. Elijah sitting under the juniper tree there, depressed, yeah. Yeah. discouraged, distraught, yeah. discomforted. Why? Because they were out to kill him. Yeah. And he thought he was the only one left in the world doing right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way he got. He got down in the, in the, in the gutter where all the unsaved are today, tonight. Right now, there are unsaved people that are in the gutter that wish themselves to die. Mm. Oh, by the way, he wasn't alone. Jonah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, just one entire nation to the Lord. <laughs> and the guy just turned around and says, God, it's better that I die than live. Oh, by the way, not alone. Joshua. Mm -hmm. He's down on his face. He loses... 0.013% of his men at the Battle of Ai, and he's down on his face thinking, I'm the wrong man for the job. I can't deliver these people. God, you need to get a new a new pastor. Mm. I can't do anything with these folks. You gotta get you gotta get somebody else to deliver them to the Joshua. God called you the captain of the Lord's host, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You went and fought the Amalekites. Right. And, and whooped them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What in the world? Yeah. You just won the battle of Jericho by marching around it seven times. Yeah, yeah. You go lose a couple of men and all of a sudden all hope is lost. Yeah. What, you think, you think you ain't got the same problems as Joshua's got? Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ says, now he's without sin, but he says he was touched with the same things you are. Yeah, right. Then they say that Jesus wept. What's that about? Oh, he was grieved with the fact they didn't believe him. You know what I'm saying? He got hungry. I preached about it. He got hungry. He got tired. He slept. There was things he didn't do or couldn't do at the end of his ministry. Fixing to go to the cross and die. His humanity fully coming to form. That he was doing at the beginning. His ministry as far as healing people was coming to a close and he was going to die all God but all man at the same time on the cross and not be able to take himself off the cross yeah. Yeah. oh by the way Paul did the same thing yeah. Paul's in jail and Paul says Trophimus or Miletus if I've left the Trophimus sick or Trophimus if I left the Miletus sick however he says it there Paul couldn't do the things at the end of his ministry that he was doing at the beginning of his ministry. Paul says, Demas forsook me. You don't think that bothered Paul? You think Paul went to the went to the chopping block dancing a jig? Come on now. That's where you are in Laodicea in the closing hours of the church age. <laughs> Beaten, battered, bloody, bruised, and betrayed. <laughs> Well, what are we going to do? We're, gonna, we're either going to get entangled with that thought and, and take our own life or, you know, spiritually speaking and quit yeah. or take our own life physically speaking and end it early to go home and be with God. And I'm sure Christians have done that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> being with God is better than being with this world. Suicide don't just happen for unsaved people. Right. Yeah. Mm. But the Bible says, hey, in light of the fact that we're free in Christ... You ain't got to be entangled with this yoke. That's right. Amen. And believe me, the world will do all they can to yoke you up to themselves or the devil or to fear or whatever else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why the government's pumping all this stuff in front of your eyeballs. Yeah. Yeah. All the stuff that media's putting out there, that's all government state-run media. Yeah. Yeah. It's a disinformation campaign to get Christians to come under the yoke of bondage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 That's what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's all run by the devil behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Using right. using front men to put the stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. And Christians are seduced by it and sucked yeah. in by it and are scared by it. Mm -hmm. And they come under the yoke of bondage. Yeah. 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 It's no wonder why they come in on Sunday morning kicking and dragging yeah. and they walk out the same way. Mm -hmm. they, they have a hard time hearing anything they when they get to church because they're they're stopped up their ears are plugged up you know what he says in one place in that bible he says purge out therefore the old leaven mm -hmm. 
Bless yeah. them. Amen. You know what purge is? Get rid of. <laughs> How many of y'all like to purge yeah. last night's meal? No. Nobody likes that. But God says that's what you got to do. You've got to you've got to purge out the stuff that you've been taking in for so yeah. long. You know how many Christians don't purge anything before Sunday church or Wednesday night church? Mm. You know why most people purge? You know what? You know, outside of being already sick, you know why people purge that kind of stuff? To lose weight. Feel better. Mm. Yeah. To lose weight. Yeah. Mm. Feel better, sure. Yeah. But lose weight. Yeah. That's a disease. Yeah. An anorexia. An anorexia. Yeah. Believe me, and all that kind of stuff. It's a purging disease. But there's something to it that is very spiritual. That is, they're taking stuff into their body and they don't—they feel guilty about what's in there, so they're purging it out. Yeah. You know, a lot of Christians could do, they should do, is maybe purge themselves of all the junk they're putting into their yeah, body yeah. before they get to church. Because yeah. yeah. there's no room for any spiritual truth by the time they get to church. Yeah. You know what God does in Laodicea? Yeah. Yes. What did he do? Yeah, he's spewing them out. He's purging them. Now, not that we're getting lost or unsaved, but he's saying, I'm so sick of all these fatty, fat, rich Christians on their hopped up goods and their worldly pleasures and lusts and self-conceited desires thinking that godliness is gain. I'm Sick of it. Yeah. I'm gonna purge, I'm gonna vomit, I'm gonna spew out, I'm gonna purge myself of all these pukey Christians, and I'm gonna spend some time with some other ones that yeah. Yeah. aren't that way, but are more like the Philadelphia or the other kind of churches. <laughs> yeah. Boy, God's showing us an example. It's okay to purge. He's purged out the old leaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of Christians have never purged out the old leaven. Some things they got something some things they were doing before they got saved, they're still doing it after they got saved 10, 15, 20 years later. They never got rid of anything. I'm not saying the church that I'm saying most of these worldly churches they're just carrying on as worldly Christians the same way that they still go to the bar on Saturday night and they roll the church on Sunday. And sway the hands and wave the hands as if they just don't care. Because they really don't. But I do think in Bible believing churches, they stay up all night watching rated R movie or getting caught up on all the stuff wherever. And then they come into church and they'll sing the lily of the valley and kneel at the cross. But there's nothing been purged since the night before. Now, I'm not saying we're going to be a bunch of Roman Catholics and sin all week and then purge it Saturday night and then come to church holy and sanctified Sunday morning. Yeah. Purging takes a, is a every night, every morning, all day long thing. Yeah. The minute you take some sin and you're guilty of it, you know what you got to do? You got to purge out that sin. Yeah. I did it at least once or twice today. I hung over the, thank you, brother. Me and you, Brad, you're the only one, we're the only ones that did it, brother. We're the only sinners in church tonight. Yeah. Praise God for us. Yeah. But no, seriously, there, there's so much stuff out there. And, and some of it you don't even mean to take in, but you yeah. do take it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I read a verse, I think today, I don't know if I can get back over there, but he's talking about the eyes and the heart, the eyes and the heart, about uh, going into the land and all the things there. And uh, basically, whatever things get into the eyes affects the heart. Right. Yeah. Amen. I think I was talking about this with you last week, Brother Brad, about... You know, how do you control the things? You know, the Bible says a man looks at a woman with lust in his heart. Well, how do I how do I walk around this world without looking at all the things that are out there in the world? I walk around, you know, with blinders on, you know, and how do I get through this world? Well, no, you're going to take in a lot of things through the eye gate and through the ear gate. Mm -hmm. We went today to the, the coffee shop in Manchester, you know, had a coffee and a bagel. I know they're pumping the stuff in, yep. you know, and so what do you got to do? You got to purge it out. You gotta purge it out. You gotta say, God, you gotta get whatever that stuff was, man. And you can't go to the grocery store. Amen. What are you gonna do? Never go get groceries? 
I mean, what are you going to do? You can't. Yeah. You, you're going to take stuff in naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Or supernaturally. Right. <laughs> Man, the fiery darts of the wicked. You could be sitting in your basement, <laughs> tinfoil on the windows, <laughs> and the devil still... You gotta purge out those thoughts. When, by not, if you don't purge them, you are gonna be yoked to them. <clears throat> you want a sermon? You ready? Yeah. You better yak, or you're gonna get yoked. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You better yak, or you're gonna get yoked. Okay. And I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of Christians that are yoked because they've never learned to yak. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty with Christ, wherewith Christ hath made us free. Now notice how he made us free. He says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith. That is, what he made us free with, the thing that he used to make us free is liberty. You see that there? Mm -hmm. Wherewith he hath made us free. So he made us free with liberty. Amen. Now how does that even make sense? How can... How can liberty, it's, liberty is an inanimate object, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't liberty, has anybody ever met liberty before? <laughs> Don't say I met a woman named liberty, you know, or, or a, a horse named liberty, you know. <laughs> but nobody's met liberty. Don't tell me it's lady liberty over there <laughs> in, in, uh, in the harbor, all right? <laughs> all right, that's not, that, that's not the liberty I'm talking about, okay? So who's Liberty. He's saying liberty made us free. Isn't that what he says? Yeah. Liberty made us free. Who's liberty? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter Alright, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, look at verse number 17. Now the Lord is that what? Alright, so there's a great reference to showing that um, the Holy Spirit is the Lord. Amen. Okay, if you want if you want cross references on the mystery of the Godhead and all that kind of stuff, yep. there's a verse there, 2 Corinthians 3 17, that shows that the Lord is the Holy Spirit. Okay? And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. So who is liberty? The Lord, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, yes. right? How did God make you free? He made you free <laughs> with the Holy Spirit. Amen. He, made you, he made you free by the Lord himself. Yes. He made you free by the Spirit of liberty, okay? Um, let's see. Back up a little bit and notice how this notice how this here is gonna match Galatians 4 coming to an end and Galatians 5 1 starting. Um, look at verse 11, 2 Corinthians 3 11. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is, glor is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face. That the children of Israel could not steadily fast, uh, steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished, but their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in who? In Christ. In Christ. But even unto this day when Moses read, the veil is upon their what? Their heart. Their heart. So... An Old Testament Jew, unto this day, and it's unto the day that Paul wrote it, but nothing has changed. Because Paul wrote it in the church age, and we are still in the church age. So, from the day that Paul wrote this, even until now, a Jew is living under the law of the Old Testament. Amen. Amen. And so because the Jew is living under the, all, the, the law of the Old Testament, he's under bondage to that law. Isn't that right? Yes. So he's not been set free. Is that right? Yes. All right. So in Galatians 4, he's showing us how Jerusalem, which now is the mother of us all, this is what made us free. But he says, hey, 
Jerusalem here on earth is still under bondage unto this day, right? He says there, he says uh, in, in uh, where were we? We were in Galatians chapter 4. He says, uh, he says, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. So the Jews at that time and her offspring were in bondage to the Old Testament law still because they've not been yet set free in Christ. Isn't that true? Yes. And so the Jew has a veil upon his face, or uh, has a veil upon his heart. Yes. His heart is blinded. He can't see the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's in bondage to that Old Testament law. And so Paul is, uh, 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 Paul who wrote 2 Corinthians and wrote Galatians, he says that just like Moses, when he came off the mount, he put a veil over his face. Right. Yeah. Why? Because the Jew could not look at Moses' face. Why? Because Moses had seen a piece of God and his glory. Yeah. And so there's a veil put over their face to, to separate them from the glory of God in natural man. And any person that cannot see the glory of God is because there's still a veil separating them. There was also a veil in the temple. Right? And the veil in the temple was to separate natural man from being able to see into the holiest of all where God would show up. Right? So any person who's unsaved is, is on the outside of that veil. And until you get set free, until you get the liberty from God to enter into the holiest of all, you're blind. Yeah, I know. Your heart is blind. Yes. And you can't see any glorious thing that's happening in the, in, in, with God and with the Bible and unfolding truth. And sadly, there's a lot of Christians who are set free but live a life still blinded to all the glorious things that are being revealed to us. Yeah. By way of Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Yeah, and you know why? Because they live a life still yoked in bondage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know why a lot of saved Christians are having a, can't make sense, two cents of what's going on in the world? Mm -hmm. It's because they're they're in bondage to the flesh. Mm -hmm. They're they're blind because they're not walking with Christ. They're not walking in the freedom, in the liberty, wherewith Christ hath made us free. They're yoked still to something else rather than the Lord himself. So they can't understand Bible prophecy. They can't understand things being fulfilled before our very eyes. So they're discouraged. They're distraught. They're discomforted. We don't have to be that way. Because number one, we've got the promise of eternal security. But number two... We've got this, this this truth that's constantly being revealed to us about where we are and how close we are to God coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are literally seeing the glory of God being revealed through the darkness of the things happening in this world. Yeah. Contrast. Contrast, right? You probably understand that from painting, right? Yeah. And in photography, you probably understand contrasting of lights. You know one time what they're doing? I'm getting lightheaded up here. You know what time, one time they were doing over there in the Old Testament? They come out of uh, Egypt. And he says that it was almost like it was a thing of darkness on one side to the nation of Israel, to the nation of Egypt. It was darkness on the back side because God was standing in between. It was darkness over here and it was light to the nation of Israel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. What's that a picture of? It's a picture of people living in the world yeah. under the yoke of bondage. And there's another side of people who, yeah, were in the world still. They were still in Egypt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they had a lot of light on their side. Mm -hmm. You know why? Yeah. Well, but yeah, they were directed by God. They had direction. Yeah, amen. They knew where they were going. Yeah. Yeah. You know why there's a lot? You know what? We know why the unsaved can't see anything going on because they are unsaved. Right. But why don't the saved have any light? Mm -hmm. Why don't the saved have any direction, have any clarity? on what's going on in the world and what this means to them as a whole for the body of Christ because they're in the flesh. Yeah. And they're not in the book. They're yoked because they haven't yet. <clears throat> That's why. It's 100% why. 
So all they can do is promise them popcorn and cotton candy and bouncy houses. Yep. As like a temporary, you know, a band-aid or some sort of, you know, a fix. A fix, yeah, like a temporary fix, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, you've got a flat tire, a plug will work for a while, yeah. but you better get the tire replaced, right? Yeah. No. right? And unfortunately, all that's going on is they just keep pulling into the same place, getting the thing replugged, and it's like, no, you need to get the tire fixed. Right. And oh, by the way, getting one tire fixed, you're going to be out of balance eventually. You're going to get all four tires fixed. Right. And then go get a line. Uh, what do they alignment. call it? Alignment. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you need. Christians are out of alignment. Folks, you, you don't realize you probably got more light than the majority of this world and saved Christians because you're in the book, because you're in church, because you rightly divide. That makes a huge difference. Now, again, it don't mean the problems ain't going to come your way. Right. And it don't mean that on personal things in your life, you might have a little, what do I do, Lord? But, listen, you can get light Amen. Yes. as long as you don't get filled up on the things of this world yeah. while you're going through whatever you're going through. Yeah, Amen? Amen. All right, go back to Galatians. I don't know if it just got hot here all of a sudden, but maybe it's this, uh, maybe, you know what it probably is, it's this like weird sort of, uh, normally, to be, normally it's up here, and I'm down here, and I'm out of, you know, I'm out of sorts, but, uh, that's all right, I don't know. Um, you just be ready to catch me, man, boys. <laughs> so he says, uh, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Now that's where you are, you're in the liberty. No. And that's what you got to remember is because you're in Christ, you're in the liberty. You are in the spirit. Yeah. Okay. Now, you may not always walk in the spirit the way you're supposed to, but doctrinally speaking, you are in the liberty because you are in the spirit and the spirit is the Lord. Yeah. Therefore, you are in the Lord this evening yeah. because you're saved. Yeah. Now, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Now, of course, the us there is only those who are, have been born again. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now notice it says again. Yes. So if these are saved people. It is possible for saved people to be yoked again yes. to bondage. Yes. He's dealing with saved people. So you got to understand that. Right. This whole Pentecostal charismatic idea or Church of Christ idea that if you've committed a sin, you've got to get re-saved or re-baptized or re-slain in the Spirit or rejoin our church or the Roman Catholic system, you know, you gotta, you know, do this whole thing over and over and over again to keep, you know, things right with God, your status, you know, with God secure. Yeah. No, 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 no. I've already been told that I'm in the liberty. And I've already been told that I'm free. So in light of that, walk with me in light of that, and don't be entangled again. But if you do get entangled again, other places, he's going to show you how to get untangled. Okay. But what he's saying here is, hey, let's limit the amount of times you get entangled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And that takes that takes growth. Right. The more you grow in the Lord, the less times you sh should become entangled in the same things. Yeah. The most frustrating thing as a pastor is to constantly be seeing Christians get re-entangled with the exact same thing they were entangled with yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a dozen years ago. Now I also know this that there's times where you could be you could get over an addiction, right? Like you could get over alcohol, 15, 20. Were we talked about this before, brother. You're not on camera, so you ain't got to put your you know name to it. But uh, he said, you know, he said I I quit drinking. It wasn't a, a thought in my mind, and then all of a sudden, some one thing pops up, and brother, there you are. That was eight, eight years later. Eight years later. What is that? It's the Irish in me, you see. Yeah. I agreed with him. The woman thou gavest me made me to drink. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's the sin nature in you is what right. it is. Right. Yeah. It's the desire. It's the lust of the flesh. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. So, hey, man, what do you do? Well, you plead the blood of Christ. You tell the Lord you're sorry. You That's confess right. it. Yeah. And, you, and you move on and say, okay. Yeah. All right, Lord. You, yeah. 
yeah, I mean, Lord, that that's the flesh. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna succumb to it. I'm not gonna excuse it away. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna just say, well, that's the way you made me. Yeah. You made me an Irishman, therefore I have to drink, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> so. Lord, I was just made with an angry temper. Lord, I'm just, you know, I'm just a bitter person. That's the way I was raised, how my grandpappy was, my grandmammy was, and we're Southerners, and we hold grudges forever. You kid that? No, 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 no. What, what happened? You were set free. Amen. You know what my daughter told me the other day? She said uh, about her biting her nails. You know what she said? And I thought, well, this is profound. If us Christians get a hold of this thing, we'd be doing all right. She was, I just got tired of biting my nails. So I quit biting them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It works. I just got tired of I just got tired of being angry, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So I just quit being angry. Yeah, yeah. Like Mom told him before, she said, it's not about you trying. That, that puts it all on you. Yeah. Just quit. Put it on God. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, Lord, I, you made me free, Lord. <coughs> so I quit. Yeah. Flush the packs, dump the bottles. Root out the anger, root out the bitterness. Mm. You know, I'm mowing uh, the grass for uh, Val the other day. And uh, it's funny how the Lord talks to you while you're doing certain mm. things, you know. So one, I don't know if her grass got cut or not. <laughs> I might have skipped a section or two. Well, Lord, that's the way you made me. <laughs> but uh, the absent-minded professor, you know. And, um, but you know what the Lord told me? He said, quit trying to solve people's problems. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'm the pastor. i got to have the answer. Yeah. No, you don't. No, no. You ain't got the answer to your own problems. How are you going to get the answer to theirs? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I told her the other day? She was talking to me about a lot of stuff, you know, and I said, Sis, I don't know. <laughs> well, great, Pastor. I'm not coming to you for help. Good, don't. <laughs> save me the save me the save me the uh, the time and to, to tell you I don't know, you know. I won't charge you either. <laughs> But, you know, that's the truth. You don't know. How do you know what somebody else needs to do? You don't know. Stop trying to fix people's problems. Those are like the three greatest words contracted. I don't know. But the moment you say, the moment I get to that place, I just quit trying to solve others' problems. By thinking I, because I'm a pastor, I have to have the answer. You know, it's not that I've always sought to solve problems, but it seems like being a pastor now you're expected to solve problems. Yeah. Yeah. And so now I have this new role to solve problems. So Lord, let me solve problems here. Then go ahead and try. Yeah. Try that for five years and see how long it takes you to get to the place where you said I just can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I said, Lord. I He says you can't, and I said, Lord, I can't. Sis, I don't know. Now here, here's some, here's some, you know. Bible advice and counsel from the scripture, but I don't know if that's answering your problem or not. Yeah. This is the verse in the Bible yeah. that identifies with your situation, but I don't know if that's the key answer to it or not. I don't know. Yeah. How can you know what somebody's going through unless you are that person? You can't know. Yeah. Well, this is what I do. This is what you should do. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. And when it doesn't work, what? Yeah. I'm not as spiritual as you. But I'd say this, what the Lord told me was, you can't do it, so you better give it up. Yeah. You can't quit whatever it is you're trying to quit, so you might as well just give up yeah, and say, God, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. You said I'm free, Lord, and I just claim that I'm free. Yeah. So I'm just tired of trying. I just quit. What a, what a weird concept yeah. to quit. Now, here, here, here's a funny verse. You ready? Here's a funny verse. Yeah. Quit you like men. Yeah. Yeah. There's more to it, but he says, quit you like men. Now, I know that the old English there is a quit, which means, you know, to let go, to release. If, you, if I quit you of something, you're, you've been set free. Ain't that what it means? Yeah. You know what quitting is? Letting go. Letting go. So God kind of does like a, we call it a double entente in our house, but a double entendre, is that the proper? Yeah. It's, the Lord's using two things to 
one, you know, yeah. two birds to kill, two stones to kill one bird, something like that, or one bird to kill two stones, or however the thing goes. I don't know. What is it? Two, what does the thing go? One stone. One stone kills two birds. God's trying, to, God's trying to give you one stone to kill two birds. Right. Up, quit, and just quit, man. Just give up and say, God, you said quit, so Lord, I quit. I'm done trying. And Lord, I'm just going to lay it on you. And I need you to take it. And her nails are growing out, aren't they? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that'll help. But again, I don't I don't have the answers to you. But that's what the Bible says that maybe might help you. So he says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty with Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That word stand fast, and um, maybe next uh, Wednesday night we'll look at some uh, prophetical verses connected to this and some other places. It shows up in the Bible nine times. That phrase, stand fast, shows up in the Bible nine times. And so, uh, well, I can't do next Wednesday night because we're going to have that missionary here. So we'll, we'll, we'll hold it over another Wednesday. But nine times that, ver that phrase shows up in the Bible, stand fast. Of course, this is one out of the nine. But the phrase means standing in a fixed or settled position. To stand fast is to stand in a settled or fixed position. So taking that in mind, stand fast. What is that? Stand fixed. Stand settled. What am I standing fixed or settled in? In the liberty. Stand fixed. Stand fast. Stand assured in the liberty. Stand fixed. Stand settled. Stand assured. What? That Christ made you free. Amen. And if you're free, then you're free indeed. Amen. What that in that one verse he says? He says, um, how, how does it go? It's in uh, John eight, where he says, uh, "You're free indeed." But how, how's the beginning? How's the beginning of the verse go? The sun shall make you free. Yeah. The sun shall make you free. You shall be free indeed. Is how it goes? Yeah. Um, is there another verse that goes along with that? I think uh, there in John. It's on the sign up there. Just want to go pick, peek at the sign. Oh, I'm trying to think of the verse. That, uh, uh, the truth will set you free. Thank you. That's the verse I'm looking for. Yeah. The truth yeah. shall make you free. Yeah. CIA is smart. That's right. <laughs> the Catholic Information Agency. Yeah. Uh, the truth shall the truth shall make you free. Yeah. And uh, if the Son of Man make you free, you shall be free indeed, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, hey, stand fixed, stand settled, stand assured yeah. that you have been made free. Yeah. Amen. By the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and what he did for you on Calvary Amen. and through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand fixed, stand settled, stand fast, stand assured. That goes to your eternal security. Amen. You're not going to lose your salvation. Amen. Stand fixed, Amen. stand settled, stand fast, stand assured that you are eternally secure to go to heaven. Amen. That is your destination. Yeah. Your wayfaring, your journeying until you get there might be a little bumpy along the way. But stand fixed, stand fast, stand settled, stand assured. That is your destination, all right? Yeah. And until then, don't be entangled with all the other junk in the world. Because if you stand fast, stand assured, stand settled, hey, it's a lot less opportunity for someone to get up from underneath you and start wrapping you up, you mm -hmm. see. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with that mind, with that mind, with this mind being you, which is also in Christ Jesus, with that mind... You can face the fear. Yeah. You can face the heartaches, the pain, the sufferings, the uncertainties. You can face the hyped up, trumped up media stuff. You can face all that stuff if you will quit trying to figure out everybody else's problems. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. Quit trying to settle the world's problems. Mm -hmm. Quit trying to get over whatever you're trying to do and just stay fixed and settled and assured that it's already done in Christ yeah, and yeah. walk in that. Okay, and see if that don't free you up. Amen. See if that don't free up some time worrying. Yeah. Amen. 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 Again, John Wesley said, "Worry, uh, worrying is uh, is a mild form of atheism." Yeah. And I guess there's some truth in that. Yeah. They don't mean that you're never going to worry. Yeah. Amen. But when those worries come, it might free up how much time you do worry. Yeah. Amen. It might help you to overcome the worrying, yeah. the fears. Amen. So, you got a yak, so you're not yoked. And the other part of that is that just quit. <laughs> just quit. Amen.
What's up, sis? So when I always read this um, verse, it just goes in my head. It's like just it's liberty from sinning, sure. basically. You have that. You kind of stretched it because I I don't know why I kind of just pigeonhole it. Just like mm -hmm. just liberty from sinning, but sure. it's actually even a little bit broader. Yeah. Because I don't know why I just I don't That's know okay. when I read it, I just go right to that. But right. And I probably it. I probably taught it that way before okay. and did pigeonhole you to it in whatever I was teaching at that time. Um, but I like that you opened it. Like, I'm opening up a little bit more for you. I think it's the first time in a long time I really Amen. got to Amen. prepare a little bit better Amen. so I can stop Amen. looking Amen. at it. And there is, there is truth in the fact that it is liberty from sin. So you don't have to, not you particularly, but you don't have to be a drunk. Right. You don't have to be addicted right. to, to, to mm -hmm. sinful things. Yeah. Right. Because, because you do have liberty from sin. That's you don't right. have to be in bondage to anger or to violence or to... Revenge, or you know, all, you don't have Any to be in no. bondage to that because you are free from sin. You don't yeah. have to sin. Yeah. You don't have to. It doesn't mean you won't, but you don't have to. You're right. 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 Uh, an unsafe person, they have to. Right. Yeah. They, don't have they don't have any alternative. Everything they do is a sin. Right. <laughs> the thought of foolishness is a sin. Everything they do all the time is 100% sin because they're unsaved. That's it. Yeah. Every second they're not saved, they're sinning against God. Yeah. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth enough, to him it is sin. So an unsaved person is constantly sinning against God because he hasn't done the good thing of getting saved, right? But a Christian, likewise, it doesn't have to sin. That's that's good. But I'm glad you've got a little bit broader. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to do that for you. Thank you. Good. Very good. Okay. Brother Gary? Philippians 4, 6 through 8, about worry. Be careful for nothing. Yeah. yeah. Worry yeah. about nothing. Yeah. Give it all to God in prayer, right. and then he'll take care of it. Yeah, amen. But you got to recognize it and give it to him. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Again, you, you know, we've got to purge ourselves from all these things that we keep worrying about, yeah. don't we? You can only handle so much worry. Yeah, that's right. And so if you already have your personal slice of worry pie, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't go back for seconds until, yeah. until you get the first one cleared off. You know? yeah. And the way kids are. Yeah. Rebecca and I, Rebecca, is, you know, she's like, you know, I always want to want to have what somebody else has. I don't want what's on my own plate. I want what somebody else has on their plate because it always tastes better. Sure. You know, so you don't want to deal with the worry on your plate, which is generally why we try to solve the problem because yeah. we can't solve our own. Yeah, that's right? true. Well, just deal with what you've got to deal with today yeah. and don't take anything else on until that thing's been taken off. Amen. Sure. Yeah. All right. Close with that. Uh, we'll break down. What little bit we have left, and then we'll go home. We'll see you on Sunday, Lord willing. My brother Dave Jr., would you dismiss us? Father, we thank you for being able to come here, Lord, and get the counsel of the Word of God. We pray that, Lord, you help us consider these things, Lord, in uh, light of our own lives, our own problems. Amen. Uh, Lord, our own circumstances, and Lord, truly, all of us got something we can work on. And, Amen. <clears throat> Lord, help us to uh, get our eyes off of each other, Lord, and put them on you. We know you're the standard. And uh, Lord, at the same time, we have a standard. You're the one that will come down and sit down next to us and talk to us and mm -hmm. reason with us and work with us. And uh, Lord, just help us get on the higher ground. And yeah. Pray, Lord, that you be with each and every one of us here tonight. Lord, when we go our own way, Lord, go in the privacy of our own homes or in our vehicles, wherever we're at, Lord, let the Spirit of God deal with our hearts yeah. and minds about these things, Lord, that you're not a God at far off, but a God at hand. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lord, we cast all our care on, on you because you care for us, Lord. Mm -hmm. Tell you our problems, Lord, and tell you, tell you, Lord, things we can't get past, and Lord, whatever's on our hearts, Lord, that uh, you know these things before we even say them, Amen. and yet, Lord, uh, you desire that we say them to you, yeah. and uh, Lord, that you might be able to talk back to us and give us some light on what we can do, Lord, to be closer to you and to get the victory over these things, Lord. Truly, you have given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind, and so we know, Lord, if we have that spirit of fear, something's not right somewhere, and we're meant to have that. And we're, to, we're meant to walk down uh, on earth, Lord, uh, with that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Lord, I pray, Lord, the devil don't get a, um, yeah. a, a, a victory or an yeah. advantage over yeah. every one of any of us. Uh, Lord, uh, you help us to, um, to uh, look to you in all these things. Amen. I pray you bless and go our separate ways in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we'll see you Sunday morning. We'll go.